Welcome to the second day of our celebration of Wolfgang. I hope to maintain the enthusiasm of yesterday. <laughs> um, my topic is Wolfgang Lutz and Demography of Austria. Uh, I first deal with some institutional aspects because Demography of Austria is kind of a small institution. Then, of course, the uh, substantive contributions by Wolfgang and a short note on micro macro. Um, so what, what are we talking about? Well, Austria is a small country, 0.20% of the world population. Uh, can you do research in a, such a small country that is relevant to the uh, global issues uh, and uh, can take international attention or be perceived by the outside world or is it only a niche? Uh, so I quote the quote Hepper Dies Österreich ist eine kleine Welt, in der die Große ihre Probe hält. This is a Google Translate. This Austria is a small world where the great holds its, its test. So can the great world learn from Austria? This might have uh, been the case at the time when Hebel wrote this, or said, uh, talk, said this in a speech. Uh, the Austrian Empire, our Italian colleagues will know, it was in the heydays of the Risorgimento, uh, when uh, Aus the Austrian eagle had lost the feather of Lombardy, but still had Veneto in its claws. And <laughs> so, uh, but there, at that time, what were the problems of uh, Austria from which um, the world could have learned uh, a multinational condominium in a period of uh, rising nationalism. Okay. Uh, come back to the uh, present. What, where is Austria leading? Can it give us best practice? Uh, in this case, we all we always see uh, other countries giving good examples. For example, Denmark, when it comes to projections of uh, labor force participation. Or Finland, Wolfgang advocates the Finnish education uh, scenario. Uh, Sweden, uh, its migration policy or the Netherlands health policy, France family policy, well not Austria. Uh, Austria had at this uh, heavy period uh, a high proportion of illegitimacy. So, but this was not uh, the best practice uh, the world would like to learn from. Um, and <coughs> even in the 1920s, it was uh, one of the, the highest in Europe. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, these uh, examples where the world could learn from a small country are now exhausted. So, I, I come to the institutional aspects in the uh, Institute of Demography that was founded in 1975 uh, by the Austrian Academy of Sciences. So we had two sections. Gustav was the leader of the theory section and uh, then we had applied demography. And this uh, applied demography decided to concentrate on Austria as a quasi-national institute. Uh, and 
the Austrian uh, society and demography problems were analyzed. So this uh, there was a, a number of uh, um, topics uh, worked on in which I would not like to read out. Uh, I think uh, Gerda Neyer will remember what she has been doing and so on. So um, we come then to uh, the expansion of the VID from 2002 under Wolfgang's leadership. Uh, it was uh, internationalized, uh, emphasizing excellence, cutting edge methodology. And also the policy-oriented profile should be kept. So the uh, two sections uh, continued as population economics and uh, demography of Austria. Other groups, uh, research groups were added. Uh, first two more and then three more groups and uh, uh, now we uh, stand at, uh, say, 70% uh, or so of the whole Wittgenstein Center's research portfolio, which, are, which the VIP uh, is doing, and the demography of Austria uh, is just a small group. Uh, it's uh, always an good argument by Wolfgang to say we have to maintain this because uh, it's a signal to the Austrian taxpayer and uh, now we are doing uh, sub substantially uh, to uh, organizing uh, international Austrian parts of internationally coordinated panel surveys. Um, we'll mention them. Uh, we are doing also smaller surveys. Um, and uh, thanks to the permeability of uh, the VIB, other researchers also work on uh, Austrian topics. Uh, I mentioned the Geburtenbarometer mainly managed by Thomas Sobotka and uh, Christoph Seemann. Then uh, Healthy Life Years uh, with Mark. And uh, religion is a topic, an Austrian, uh, an Austrian topic as well, uh, in which we had this uh, large project by Anne on the Viren. And uh, last but not least, I would also mention that uh, on our homepage we have a historical inventory of uh, all places in Austria and South Tyrol where you can uh, find the number of houses and inhabitants uh, for the smallest places uh, in a historical perspective since the Middle Ages. So. Um, our main activities now are the GGS, then the SHARE, mainly uh, taken care of uh, by Isabella, and uh, we work here together with uh, uh, the Austrian Institute of Family Studies on the GGS and also Statistics Austria. <coughs> then uh, the SHARE is with Linz University, and uh, very recently, uh, a joint effort of the three big pillars, uh, very <coughs> substantively um, advocated by Wolfgang. Also, he also contributed in organization and in uh, uh, the contents. So this was the displaced persons in Austria survey. Um, all the three big pillars, VIT, VU, and IASA, 
um, were contributing. Uh, it was uh, published in PLOS One uh, in September. And uh, now uh, we try to uh, organize also uh, here uh, a new line of research which I call retention panels, that is the combination of um, survey records, for example, health interview survey or microsensors uh, where we um, had uh, commissioned fertility questions, fertility intentions, uh, and uh, we will look if uh, Statistics uh, Austria can provide us uh, the follow-ups in the coming years with uh, vital statistics records on births, marriages, uh, divorces, deaths, uh, vital statistics. So, um, now I come to the substantive contributions by Wolfgang. Uh, I think uh, he has uh, almost 300 uh, scientific publications and according to my small statistics it's more than 40 where the title contains Austria or where I know that Austria has uh, a relevant, is a, giving a relevant example in the interpretation and uh, on, uh, or where Austria is together with other countries. So the first uh, work in his three-year employment at uh, the Institute of Demography from 1983 to 85 uh, was a fertility table based on parity together with Gustav Feitinger and uh, here we have an example where Austrian data, uh, where the uh, reason why Austria is uh, being analyzed. So, uh, and the, the life table approach to marriage, divorce, and parity remained also a tool. Uh, in several other articles uh, on Austria and the family cycle of Austrian women. Then we had this uh, panel study on motivation of parenthood where Wolfgang also analyzed uh, in a number of papers uh, both methodological and uh, substantive uh, topics um, and one on the predictive value of fertility studies. Here he developed the concept of marginal desired family size and uh, analyzed uh, uh, or evaluated uh, approaches to fertility projections that can emerge from fertility surveys. So then another topic was trends in the religious composition of Austria's population, interreligious marriages, uh, what, in which denomination the children are baptized, uh, and so on, and uh, demographic projections for the Protestant church. Uh, then, uh, Austria was also uh, in uh, the, the subject of uh, uh, two papers where um, Jim Rupel and Thomas Büttner uh, were the co-authors uh, of Wolfgang. So then um, the probabilistic projections were, um, which were developed uh, at YASA, uh, were also propagated to be implemented uh, in national uh, 
population projections. So Austria was an example. I think later on also Germany. And uh, this uh, is a graph from the Austrian publication in Statistische Nachrichten by Annika Lutz and Scherboff. And then it uh, was also presented at, uh, in the European Journal of Population by Lutz and Scherboff. So, um, uh, yes, uh, Wolfgang also served as a um, research director of the Institute of Family Studies and uh, here also got quite a lot of uh, papers and uh, monographs uh, appeared on fertility and family survey together with uh, Gabriele Doppelhammer um, then uh, the Micro simulation model FAMSIM was uh, presented in a monograph and uh, in census evaluations from a children's perspective, other than the uh, usual uh, perspective from the households or families, and then a compendium of family studies in Austria an account of what was to, uh, being done. So, in, uh, in the first editions of the Vienna Yearbook, now in the reorganized uh, VIP, um, two articles on Vienna and Austria uh, were published as a cover. Um, and uh, these are Vienna, a city beyond aging, that, uh, refers to a uh, YASA publication uh, of 1988-89 uh, and of course the title is self-explaining. Uh, now you see that uh, Vienna has become very dynamic um, um, and uh, as, as the uh, representative of the uh, Lord Mayor yesterday uh, told us, um, maybe uh, it's time for another revision. So, and also the good <coughs> barometer, which was uh, uh, very much supported by Wolfgang and developed mainly by Thomas Sobotka, but uh, with substantive inputs. Uh, by Wolfgang, and uh, it was also uh, on the cover of the yearbook. So we have two prominent Austrian uh, topics uh, where Wolfgang uh, was involved, and uh, uh, which gave, uh, which were given high attention. So in the last uh, year, since 2012. <coughs> Uh, Wolfgang in his writings uh, about Austria focused on projections and of course on the um, consequences that should be uh, drawn from these projections uh, with uh, uh, almost uh, recipes for uh, Austrian politicians. So uh, there was uh, Together with Elke Leuchinger, uh, an article on uh, book, uh, a book contribution uh, in Bruckmann Festschrift, uh, Austria's Humans 2032, um, with multi state projections, uh, three education scenarios, among them the, the Finnish one. Then labor force participation in five scenarios and uh, the health status uh, with the criterion of severe limitation of daily activities. So, and uh, several other contributions on these trends for Austria 2050 and in the global, partly in the global context, 
uh, appeared in 2013 and 2015. One was for the Austrian Science Day, another one uh, for the um, research and technology development uh, council, and uh, an, uh, another one with, uh, in, in a book that was uh, uh, edited by two um, uh, yes, uh, emeriti politicians. Uh, Hannes Androsch and uh, uh, Taus uh, for the Austrian uh, audience. So, and then of course also the publication in PLOS One was uh, uh, Mark, uh, with Wolfgang uh, as a co-author. So this also is of course an Austrian topic, although the influx comes from the Syrian war and uh, the um, Afghanistan war and so on. So I come to the end uh, uh, and uh, I want uh, to um, well, uh, yeah, I need this uh, uh, yes um, <coughs> A, cal a, a calculation that refers to Wolfgang's biography. So, he was not born in Austria, but as all we know, it was in Rome, but in the year 1956. And now, I, uh, I saw from uh, a table in uh, Demographic Indicators and Statistics Austria, thanks to Johannes Klotz, who did all this, um, that, um, well, the data go until 2014, but I made uh, rough estimates of the total of uh, men aged 60 living in Austria. Then I um, took as a proxy the average of the life tables 80, to 80 and 90, uh, which are in the middle of uh, 1956 and 2016 uh, and we come to 88.4% of survivors on a cohort basis uh, of a cohort life table, so to say. That means that 2,500 lifetime net immigrants up to age 60 came to Austria or remained in Austria. Wolfgang is one of them. <laughs> yeah, they account uh, almost 5%. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, it, it was uh, amazing to me to see that Wolfgang always has been considered to be Austrian, but I think it was age 10 or 12 when you moved from southern Bavaria to Vienna uh, and became uh, immediately naturalized because of the rules for university professors at that time. His father, yeah? <laughs> 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 and so I guess this is, uh, this is an example of the way you have the least problems of uh, integration from one outside place to Austria. Southern Bavaria and Austria, well, it's, for many people, it's much the same. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so this, yeah, and, and uh, another observation, uh, Wolfgang is also the, the name of a prominent place at Lake Wolfgang, it's Sankt Wolfgang, where you have the White Horse Inn, which is a very uh, prominent topic of uh, music and musical theater. And then Lutz is a river in Vorarlberg. Uh, it's the, the river that uh, 
um, flows through the Great uh, Walser Valley. So Wolfgang and Lutz is long, has long standing been a part of Austria. <laughs> and uh, I think a hundred years ago, with this prominent achievement that you have made, you would have been nobilitated <laughs> as, uh, as Wolfgang Lutz von Lutzmannsburg, <laughs> which is also a, a place in Austria. So, and now, this um, uh, enigma here, I refer to what, was, what has been said yesterday twice. Uh, we wish you all the best for the next 60 years. Now I am in the situation to explain <laughs> like the teacher of a crown prince or of an archduke, why this is correct, 120. Well, 60 uh, is the new 50. That has been said yesterday also. So, the uh, remaining life expectancy of 50 is 30. And on top come six years for the academician bonus. <laughs> and you have five memberships in scientific <laughs> academies. Abultos <laughs> annals. And as uh, in Russian it is Stolat, but we have now stored what's a plot. <laughs> Thank you very much.